Yeah, is it visible? Good, 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 good. Okay, so the candlestick trading, now candlestick trading is, is a very interesting topic for me because this is the one topic whenever I come online and I you know, talk to my students or meet any new student that's coming my way, it's, it's very interesting to see the way they talk about candlesticks because the way candlesticks has been taught in the past, it's a very unique way of, or uh, let's put it this way, it's very linear, it's very linear. You know, it's A plus B is equal to C. Okay, let's hear everything that you guys know about candlesticks. What do you guys know about candlesticks? When, when I say candlesticks, what comes to your mind? Anything that pops into your mind, just, just blurt it out. What comes to your mind when I say candlesticks? A story engulfing represents the underlying structure, price action, trend, description of price, stories, strength, Japanese candles, um, a receipt for a transaction. Okay, I can see we got a urban forex student there. Uh, description of what is happening in the market, indicator of price, engulfing candles, change direction, market story, previous price action, open close. Okay, high lows. Okay, now when it comes to candlestick trading, yeah, there we go. We got some people saying uh, uh, pin bar reverse. Uh, we got another student from Urban Forex saying rubber band man. <laughs> okay, yeah, but that rubber band man is more gauging momentum, right? So when it comes to candlesticks, now let me let me do this. If I open up my paintbrush here, okay, uh, give me a second, let it load up. Okay, you guys see the white screen on uh, on the board here? Okay, so I'm gonna draw a candle for you guys, okay? A typical candle. Okay, what does this mean to you? Let's hear it. What is, if I show this to you guys, and those of you who guys are, who are watching the recording, just answer this question. What does this mean to you? Answer it in your head, even though you can't type. Okay, yeah, let's say, you know, okay, some people are saying indecision, some people are asking which color. Okay, let's say the color is red. Let's say it's filled red. Equilibrium, no decision, indecision, equal pressure on both sides. Equilibrium, range. Okay. Nothing to me without a story, very good, very good. It's going going up, then down. Open, high, low, close equals bearish. Okay, good, good. Okay, so lots of analysis around this thing. Okay, if I if I do this, now watch the responses of everyone in the chat. Okay, look at this. If I go like this, and then I do this, and I say this is red. Okay, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Reversal, pin bar, bearish, hammer, pressure from above, pin bar, reversal. Okay, good. You see all the responses are very, now this time, all the education is the same for everybody. Everyone is saying reversal, they're, or they're calling it hammer, or they're calling selling pressure. Every, everyone's answer is practically the same, okay? Which is good, which is good. We like the same, right? All right. Now, if everyone's education is revolving that, all the information is, is pointing to is the markets are gonna reverse, right? Right, so that's what everyone's saying. Now, do you guys know how the Japanese candlestick started? Do you guys know the story of it? Just a brief background, very quickly. How did it start? How did it start? Was it some guy on Wall Street saying, uh, I wanna, you know, I like candles in my house because my wife buys candles all the time, so I'm gonna make candlesticks the main thing. No, right, so it's a Japanese rice seller, right? So now a Japanese rice seller, which time did he use rice selling? At, at what time, long, long time ago, right? What time frame was this in the year? How long ago was this? Yeah, this was a long, long time ago. This is a long, long time ago. Now, when you're talking about long, long time ago, can you, can all of you guys explain one thing to me? Did they have one minute charts at that time? Did they have a 10 second chart or a tick chart? 
Did they even have an electronic screen to see a chart? No, right? So when you when you think of it that way, if there was if there was nothing there and they have no charts, I want you to keep that in mind because that 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 information is going to come in handy in a little bit. What I'm going to explain next. No, it's not wizardry. Okay. A candlestick, when it was designed, it was designed to see the universe within. Do you guys understand what I mean by the universe within? If this is the open, for example, it, let's say this is a green candle, right? I'm going to put a G in there. That's green. You know, that's gangster. Okay, so there's the open price. Here's the close price. Okay. Here's the highest price. And here's the lowest price. Okay, when we see a candlestick like this, the rice trader built this to see the universe within in a larger time frame to see what's going on inside of it. Okay, so if I was to draw it in a line, the price went from here, probably went down to here, went up to there maximum, and then it closed like that. Now, is that, when you look at that in terms of a line, is that an uptrend or a downtrend or what's going on? It's an uptrend. It's as simple as that. Because if I was to draw this for you with a bunch of candles, like a whole bunch of candles, whole bunch of candles coming down, whole bunch of candles going up, and then a whole bunch of candles coming down, you would definitely say that's an uptrend. It is used to see the universe within. It is not used to predict the chart, the chart that you're looking at. This is the misconception every, every public trader out there has, every retail trader. They do not see the universe within it. They just look at it for what it is and they start making patterns and they start making all these words out of it. Engulfing, bearish, uh, this and that and all sorts of stuff, right? Aren't you guys sick of all, all this vocabulary that you have to learn but getting nowhere? I mean, isn't that irritating? It used to irritate me a lot when I was starting. I was like, wow, what is all this words I'm learning? Like, what is this? What are, where am I going with this? You know, it's like sitting in class and being, you know, you know, uh, teachers going on and on about talking about all this knowledge that he has to share with us, but we're sitting there like, when will I ever use this? You know, have, how many of you guys had that feeling in class if you guys were ever in, you know, some university or something like that where the teacher just keeps talking and you're like, what, what is this? You know, like, are they just, you know, saying something to, to use my time so I can go home and be like, that class was useful because he said a lot of stuff I didn't understand. <laughs> it's like, like, there's no point, you know, if a student's not going to understand, there's no point. Okay, so let's go into this. Let's go into this. All right. Now, when we see railroad tracks, okay, railroad tracks are basically, here is going to be a, uh, let's say that's a green candle. I want to label that green. And then immediately after is a red bar. Okay. And the price is going up like that to there and then going down from there. Now, these railroad tracks that show up like this, remember the concept of the universe within, but the universe within also goes with the universe above. Anyone lost yet? Does, that, does everyone understand that? Which also means the time frame above, okay? Just, so just keep that in mind. Okay, when you look at a chart, your eyes should be able to look both below and above. Okay, below means the lower time frames, above means the higher time frames. So this movement here, if I was to draw it in one single candle and I say this is the opening price, this is the closing price, this is the highest point, and this is the lowest point, how would that look? Opening, closing, let's say in that same price, highest point and there is no lowest point. Now, do you understand when people say an exhaustion candle is a reversal? Now, do you understand what a reversal actually is? Instead of just taking it for granted, now you know what it actually means, right? Doesn't that clear up things a little bit more? So if you think in that terms, everything, forget the vocabulary. When they say it's a reversal, draw it out and be like, why is it a reversal? Let me understand. Why is this saying the market's going to continue? Let me draw it. Let me understand. Forget the words. You know, 
just try to break it down, reverse engineer it and be like, what does it mean? What does it mean to you? How useful is it going to be? Okay. So everything I'm going to show you from here on out, I want you guys to think in a reverse engineering concept. Okay. We're going to break it down. You're going to, you're going to tell me about the universe above and the universe below. And I'm going to test you guys. Ready? All right, let's get going. Let's get going. All right, here we go. Okay, so over here, uptrend, everyone agree? Okay, good. Now, look at how many people are saying yes. Would you say 100% people said yes? Okay. Now keep a close eye on this. This is a trick question that I asked you guys. <laughs> okay, I'm guilty, but I'm going to show you why. Okay, this uptrend, I'm going to go to, go up to the daily chart. And if I draw a line across from here, straight like that, what is this movement that went up and came back down below? <laughs> Chris, what have we done? It's a probe. It's a sideways market. It's a fake out. So the high never happened. And in fact, the market's not even got made a higher high. That's a fake higher high. Now, if you are seeing the universe above and below, you understand you're in a range market, right? Now, if I was to go to a weekly, what would that look like on a weekly? Okay, I was hoping it would be a, uh, a wick, but and not in this one, it's not a wick. So it's basically, there was no higher high. There was no higher high. So if I go back to the daily or the four hours, think of it this way. As the four hour guys are looking at it on an uptrend, there are people who are noticing this without switching to the daily time frame. be like, I'm watching this very carefully because as it comes back down, you're like, aha. It doesn't knowing this information also help you with entries like this area and this area? Doesn't all this open up if you just get that information in? Just a little bit of extra information like that, it opens up potential like crazy, doesn't it? So now the question is, is it not an uptrend still? And the answer is yes, it is. For these traders on this time frame, it is. The problem is when it blasts up like that, all the entries, okay? You can mark my word for this. All the entries all around the world is gonna activate in this area. All the buys will activate there because people enter late, right? Who buys here? No one buys when there's sellers coming in, right? No one buys that. People only buy after they see a spike up and they're like, oh my God, I want to buy it too. If it's going up, I want to know someone's making money and I want them to show me how to make money. So I'll buy it too. So then you'll always end up getting in late, right? That neighbor who buys real estate and then you're like, oh yeah, me too, me too. But it's already gone. It's done. Right? And we're all guilty of it. You know, you know I, I'm seeing comments uh, with people saying, you know, they're feeling guilty, but we're all, all guilty of it. I used to do this all the time. I used to think I, I, I was that magic kid that used to always fail on, you know, I, I had luck, but the other way. <laughs> it's just like, so, I, you know, so it, it, it may feel like, you know, you're the chosen one for bad trades, but it's not like that. It's just human mentality. So we're going to go deeper into this. Let's go, let's go deeper into this candlestick stuff. Okay, ready for some more examples? Let's open up. What pair do you guys like? Give me a pair. Okay, Euro Yen, that's the first one I saw. We got Pound New Zealand. Okay, we'll do Euro Yen. We'll jump into Pound New Zealand after. Here we go. Euro Yen. Yeah, is the screen up and running at Euro Yen? Everyone can see it? Yeah, okay, here we go. All right, on Euro Yen. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna, some of you guys said you guys had a problem with, uh, uh, the size of the chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it bigger. 
so you all can see. Is that is that easier to see on the eyes? Okay, good, good. Just let me, if it's too small, just let me know. I'll zoom in a little bit more for you guys, okay? Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure it's good for everyone. Don't worry. Okay, so moving forward from here. Now look at this. The markets keep going higher. They pull back. They go higher. They reach up to this point here. I'm, I'm going to use my marker to draw this. They go up. They pull back. They go higher. And then they collapse here at some point. Now, the collapse, when, when the markets collapse like that, you know, due to news or whatsoever reason, this can look like, oh, the markets are switching direction. Right? So if I was to take only this part in the middle, just, just the part in the middle, let me delete this. And I'm going to draw a circle for you guys. And I want you guys to tell me how this would look if I was to draw it in one candle. How would that look if I was to draw it, that in one single candle? Imagine the universe above. How would that look? So, opening price here, closing price up here. Okay, so I'm gonna drag this across. Here's the opening, so you guys can see it. There's the opening right there. Here's the closing right there. Here's the highest point right here. So that's gonna be a wick. And then the rest is gonna be, there was no lower price than this, right? So there's no tails on the bottom. This is gonna be a red bar, completely red. Okay, now doesn't that look like sellers for most people? All right, so if I go up on a higher time frame, let me go up here. And let me go up a little bit higher. I don't think that we were, we're not gonna be able to get that one. We need a different time frame for this because it depends on what, what area it starts from. Okay, but that would be a, oh, 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 sorry, this would be green. You're right, you're right, sorry. Yeah, that's the confusion part. There is, it's green, it's not red. Uh, Thiago, thanks for the correction. Yeah, it's green. Yeah, does everyone see why it's green? Because if this is the open here, the close is higher. Yeah, so it's green. So it's not an exhaustion. It's not a reversal bar. Okay, when a candle like this comes in and it's green, what does that indicate to you? What trend is it? It's an uptrend still. Okay, so always remember that. Just because it has a large tail on a uh, wick on top doesn't mean it's a reversal yet that's why you know when you see exhaustion candles they say they say the exhaustion needs to be the opposite color this is why because this still looks like an uptrend on a lower time frame yeah it's nearly exhausted do you guys do you guys understand that why an exhaustion candle has to look the opposite color like if you're in an uptrend everything is green the exhaustion candle better turn red Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna I'm gonna just, if you may, I'm gonna confuse you guys a little bit here. Take a look at this area here, just that spot. How would we draw that? Opening, close, and also the highest point, lowest point. Was that green? Yeah, it's a solid up candle, right? Okay, so you guys are getting better with the with the recognizing the universe above and below. Now let's put this into practice. Let's see, now, yeah, I get it, but how do we know where to draw from, right? How, how do we know if I should draw from here, if I should draw from before or after? Okay, so the point of all these examples up until now, up just up until now is to make you guys look at the idea of what does this look like to the boys above me and what does this look like to the to the kids below me okay does that make sense every everything okay is up until now anyone confused okay good we're gonna keep going we're gonna keep going all right now 
we're going to take this on. We're going to mark this area so we know where we are. Put a line right there. I'm going to take this on to the daily. Okay? Now, in the daily momentum, what's the direction of the market that you see? Uptrend. It's clear uptrend. Now, why is it an uptrend? Is it because the screen looks high? You know, it keeps going up, 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 up. Is that why? Or is there a, is there a pattern to the up? Okay, some people are saying breakout. Some people are saying impulsive correction, pattern. Yeah, there's a pattern to this uptrend. It's creating higher highs, higher lows. This pattern is a pattern of an upward market. Okay, to these daily people, if I was to go on to this day, and I'm looking at it right there on this chart, right there on that candle, let's say the day is at that day right there. Where do you think the daily guys are drawing their support resistance? Would you say they're drawing it right here? Yeah, at the last red candle, right? They're drawing their support resistance right there, right? Okay, now I'm gonna drop it down. Okay, just take a quick glance at the four hours, just take a quick look at it, at that area. And now I'm gonna bring it down to the one hour, okay? Just remember this screen. I'm gonna bring it down to one hour. This may be a little bit advanced, but I'm gonna to try to see if you guys can keep a focus on it. How would you see if you were at this candle right here? Right there, where would you draw your support resistance if you guys were a one hour trader? Okay, would you guys all agree that it would be like that? Right now, think to yourself the 60 minute boys are drawing their support resistance like that. To these guys, this is a nice sell. To the big boys, the daily chart, this is in an uptrend. What is this? Yeah, there we go. We got some zoom in here. Right, what is this battle called? This money spot. This is where all the money is made. Okay, if you guys have seen some of my lectures on money spot or, you know, uh, it's out there. It's the money spot. Okay, this is where all the money is made. Now, if if you're looking at this area, now, how many current pairs do you guys normally trade? Okay, two, some people are saying depends. Five, four. A few, okay, if you're looking at a few currency pairs, right? You're looking at four or five on average, let's say three on average, depending on one's results. Let's say three on average. And you have to look at 15 minutes, the one hour, the four hours, the daily, the weekly, and then go to the next pair and do the same thing again and keep it all in your mind, keep it all in your brain all the time. How are you gonna stay on top of the market? It's not possible. This is where candlesticks comes in handy to look at the universe above and below. Now, what's the easiest way to look at the universe? How many candles, one candle or 50 candles? One candle, that is the right answer. Higher time frame. one candle. You get that one candle information in first, and then you go in deeper, and then you extract the information and be like, okay, I know I have to buy, let me figure out when. Okay, so this sellers are coming in here. Okay, they're coming in here, they're coming in hot. When a red sharp candle comes in like that, to you, this should be, yeah, th this, is a, this is a four hour, one hour trade, actually even mixed with daily, Adrian. Because uh, the question is, is, uh, is the four hour, one hour combination a nice one? Uh, yes, the four hour, one hour is, is my favorite one when I'm trading actively. Uh, and the daily four hour is my preferred one when I'm uh, traveling. Okay, I, I'm gonna show you guys a trade I did also recently, don't worry. Uh, that's a daily four hour trade I'm gonna show you. Okay, so 
Now this one, so you see the seller's territory coming in, right? You heard the sellers coming in hot. And when they see this red bar, what do you think is going through their mind? Okay, a, a big red drop is happening. What do you think is going in their mind? They're like, oh my God, it's dropping. It's going to crap. I need to sell it. I need to get rid of my euros or I need to sell euro yen so I can earn profit. Yeah, sell, 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 sell. Everyone's looking to sell as much as possible, right? Because they don't wanna miss it. So the sell never activates here, never. Never, 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 never. The cell always activates here. In this zone is where all the chasing happens. Right? Okay. Now, once everyone is getting in from that area because they're feeling confident, when this suddenly comes, up, comes down here and then it jumps right back up, jumps right back up, and then it comes down a little bit more, and then it comes right back up. Now, if I was to say to draw these kind of, let me, let me do it even further. I'm gonna take you down to the 15. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to your question, what, that pin bar that you guys said, one second. Okay. Now we're gonna look at this very carefully. The markets are coming down heavy. They're coming down heavy here. They pause for a split second. Okay, two bars, they pause. After that pause, I'm gonna take that support where that pause happens and I'm gonna drag it across. Would you say that low happened? Is that low ever happened? No, that's a faker, right? You know, some people call that, you know, if you're doing range trading, it's a fake out. Now, what if I drag this area further down like that? Isn't that an interesting area for me? You know, for those of you guys who love precision trading and you guys asked this question about timing, we're gonna be releasing the timing course soon, uh, not to worry. This is gonna have every little details about how to get your trade pinpoint, basically. Okay, so, when you see this area, it's like, okay, for, for, if I was to draw this area from the moment they rested, okay, those of you guys who are in the price action uh, uh, course, when they rested here, the rubber band man, and then he, 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 he paused a little bit, he ran again, he got to this low, and then he rested how much? 150%, right? If I was to draw this in one candle, open, close tail and it's green this is telling me your your support line from the daily is now active your support line from the daily is now active and all we're doing is give me a pullback and i'm gonna buy this but where's the pullback coming to i also want that information i'm not gonna let go another 10 pips also i'm i'm I have an Indian background. I'm stingy. I want every penny. So I'm going to get that piece in as well. I did, I've done so much research on this timing part. You know, when you guys ask me questions on timing, I was like, oh, man, I'm going to blow your minds away when, it, when we come to the timings course because mm -hmm. we have so much to discuss on timing. And it's wonderful that how things come down to pinpoint accuracy. It almost looks like everything is staged. Okay. All right. So. When it comes down to this area, price has begun to buy. But remember, if people are buying in this area here, look at the same thing happens. For those of you who are looking at this on a 15 minute chart, they're looking at this as, whoa, support equals resistance, sell, support equals resistance, sell. What is happening to my sell? Why is it not working? Because we know exactly what's happening in the market. You are aware of the universe above and below. Does that make sense? Are you guys getting the hang of where you can go wrong in a trade? Once the money spot happens, the only thing left to do is to make sure, is the big boy going to mess with me? Okay? When there's a battle in the money spot, you got your lower time frame and your higher time frame, who's going to win the battle? 
the higher time frame. Yeah, it's they're gonna win. Period. There is no second option. They're gonna win. It's almost ninety nine percent of the time they're gonna win. Okay, so keeping that in mind, I got a little special bonus for you guys too today. Now, you guys of you, those of you guys who have already taken the course, I'm gonna put you to a quiz. Okay, how many guys here are from the, the Mastering Price Action course today? Okay, we got. It looks like more than 10. To, okay, we're more than 20. Uh, just finished today. Okay, we're, we're crossing. It uh, looks like 15. Okay, okay. Here's a, here's a special uh, bonus for you guys. Okay, I'm going to show you a trade of minds. I want you to walk me through a, a, what do you think Naveen did for this trade? Okay, I'm going to show you what I did. I'm going to show you how I did it uh, after you guys answer it. I'm going to show you how much money I made off of it too. So that way, we're gonna go hand in hand. We put our money where our mouth is, right? That's the best way to learn. Let's do this, okay? Let's go, I'm gonna go into the elite community. Okay, this is November 22nd. I was, I was traveling at that time, and I posted up this thing. I said, just took a buy on pound CAD. This is a longer term trade coming in from the daily, so not expecting fast results, okay? Just earlier today, this is what, I think uh, da, 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 an hour ago, just an hour ago before this webinar started, uh, I updated it saying, this is what the trade currently stands at. We're gonna go into the live charts to show you this. And the trade's currently running for me at more, more, than, more or less 2,100 uh, pounds on this trade. Okay, so let's, let's go into Let's go into why. Okay, forget the money, forget, uh, okay, the trade's working, blah, 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 forget that. Let's go into the why, because that's the most important part, okay? So let's go into pound CAD, and we're gonna, we're gonna you know, deconstruct it completely. Here we go, here's pound CAD. Let's move it up to the recent date. Okay, let's go into the daily. Okay, we're here at the daily now. What's the direction of the daily? Oh, screen's very small, sorry, sorry, here we go. What's the direction of the daily? Is that, is that better? Okay, good, good, good. Okay, I see many of you guys saying down, some of you guys saying rain, some of you guys saying up. Okay, so there's a confusion here. Okay, and those of you who, who are having the confusion, wait till you reach week six, I believe, uh, of the course. This is gonna unfold it for you guys, but I'm gonna explain it right here as a, as a brief uh, summary. Okay, this market, it looks overall in a downtrend, okay. When I take this much data for overall in a downtrend, I'm taking data from July, for God's sake, from July to now. Do I want to trade today based on information from July? No, that's too much data. That's too much data. That's like weekly, boys. That's not for us. Yeah. If you just think of it in that sense of, just remember, the, the one thing I teach you guys is just think logically. Just think logically. Why do you need so much data? <laughs> right? So we're in a range. Uh, Adrian, that's correct. The answer you guys said, we're in a range. But when I saw this, I saw this at that moment as, okay, here is the support resistance. we got a higher high. we got the next support resistance here. And we're still in the buyer's territory, right? In this buyer's territory, my job is, Okay, I know I have to buy. That's without a doubt. Give me a seller and I'm gonna buy it. Let me go down to the four hours. Okay, at what point do you think I started to read my uh, seller, the rubber band man? At what point do you think I read it? Okay, so how, when, when is he exhausted? After the 28th? No, that's far out. In fact, I had to sit through all this. Third bounce. Okay, it is in this area I got in. 
Okay, let's, so let's go through the sequence. The sellers are coming in. They're coming in. I'm going to draw this line here. The sellers are coming in. That's their new support resistance. Okay, they're coming in. That's their support resistance. They're, they're, they're aggressive. They're happy. They think they're making a lot of money. Okay, that's fine. Let them make money. It's their turn. We'll take our turn later. They come down. They come to this area. They're holding. They drop again below. They're aggressive. Okay. Let them keep making money. That's fine. We know they're entering our, our area. Now, we don't know if they're going to go below our line yet. Okay, we have to watch the characteristics of what they're doing. So this is the lowest point here. This is where everyone goes wrong. That's the marker. That lower lowest point right there. After that, did we make a lower low? Right there where my arrow is now. Is that a lower low? No. How about here? What if I put my arrow here? Is that a lower low? Remember, universe above. Yeah, it looks like a lower low, but it's not. And that lower low gives these guys confidence that it's a sell. It's a sell. Their confidence is my profit. Okay. And for those of you who, got, who, who are going to graduate, it's going to be your profit too. You know, you know, because it's just a matter of how you look at the knowledge. If you look at it in the right way, you're not going to be the 95%. You're going to be the 5%. Do you guys see the shift here? The, the difference in looking at the universe above and below? Isn't that, a, isn't that an exhaustion part right here? From here, it goes down and it comes right back up. Open and close up here. Uh, okay, Chris Sayers, can you go through that lower low part again? Okay, here. So once the line was here, okay, everyone see the support resistance right here? In the purple line, I moved it back up. Yeah, everyone see that? Okay, once we... Once they go down, they halt for a bit here. That halt, when it happens, they break below it. They make a new low after they break that. Correct? Once they make the new low, we're going to mark the low and be like, okay, that's the spot. We're going to mark that marker. That's the lowest point that they created. After that, we're waiting for that lowest point to be broken again. We're not looking for, ah, that's a new support resistance. No, it's not. It's not our true support resistance. That's just a miniature, I don't know what. It's nothing. The, the support resistance is here. Because the marker is down here. Hey, that low was never crossed. Never crossed again, and never crossed again, and never crossed again, and I hit my buy. Experiencing very nominal loss and experiencing everything on the upside as pure profit. Makes sense? Uh, um, my, my pointer basically is at that circle where I drew that circle. Uh, Chris, that's where I, I'm saying where, that's where I entered at that circle. I see silence in the room. No one's speaking. Are you guys, what, taking notes or something? What's going on? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, is your entry due to the buy candle? No. I buy when there's sellers, not when there's buyers. Remember that. Okay. It's, it's very amateur to buy with buyers. We buy only when there's sellers. Let people have confidence the market is a sell. We're going to come in as a buy. Ah, okay. So, Chris, that's a good question. When did you know the sell was over? Okay. Who can answer that question? Who, who is in here from the course? I, I want to see who, who's been taking the course uh, well. How do we know when a sell is over? Okay, whoever answers it first, I'll get you guys a discount to the next course. Uh, who answers it first? Okay, Chris Judge, V formation or 100% retrace? Bingo, bingo. There. Okay, here we go. So when we see this right here coming down, okay, sellers are hot. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw it very nice and easy for you guys to see. And I want you guys to see if you guys can figure it out with me as I speak it out loud. Seller coming in like that. You guys see my red line? 
Should I make it thicker or you guys can see it? Thicker, please. Okay, let's make it thicker. Da, da, da. Oh, uh, okay, it looks like we're out of luck. That is the thickest. Okay, I, I know how to make it thicker. If you just bear with me one second. Whoops. Just hang in there, guys. I am almost done. Is that is that more visible? I mean, I, it looks the same to me. Um, okay. I see you see that line better. Okay, let me, let me just use that line. Okay, so let's do this. So here comes the seller. Boom, boom. Okay, from that piece, he pulls back. Boom. How much retracement is that? How much percentage retracement, guys? 20%. What does that tell you about the seller? Is he healthy? Let's say he's running. He's the running guy. He's healthy. Yeah, he's extremely healthy. All right. He's running. He's running. He's running. He runs again. He runs, 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 runs. Boom. He makes a new record. He beats his previous record by running. And then he rests again. But this time he rests this much. What would you say about his strength now? Still strong. Very good. He's healthy. And then he runs. He runs down to here, makes his newest record here. Boom. And then how much does he rest? After that, this rest until here. How much percentage rest is that? 80%. What's happening to our seller? My God, that champion who was always running and making money for all these sellers. What's happening to him? He's dying out. He's slowing down. He's dying out. Okay, he runs again. What happens to him? Does he beat his own record? No, he doesn't beat his record. What happens next after he doesn't beat his record? How much does he rest? Almost 100%. Okay, he's pretty much at 100%. He does one last run, and this is my favorite part. This gives the sellers confidence. And this only if the red bars are there, I get confused. But it's only a matter of time when the green comes right back in. You're like, okay, I see what happened. Everyone's selling at this point. Everyone is selling, but we know the sell's over. That, that last red drop happens. Once the sell is over, we, we start getting prepared. We do our money management. We get our PIP calculator out, make sure everything is correct in terms of percentage, our risks. Uh, we do all that stuff. We prepare. We, we stay in a good mood. We keep a good mental attitude. We do whatever we have to do to prepare for our trades. I don't know if you, some of you guys who have taken the motivation and daily routines yet. How many of you guys have taken that? Any, anyone in here with the motivation and daily routine? Oh, there you go. Tiago. Uh, Chris took it today. Chris, there. You, okay, another Chris. Good. How do you guys feel, MD Hassan? How do you guys like that course? Do you guys see that they can give you some value? I put in everything I do into it, hardcore into it. Like it's what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. It's how I live. Okay. So once this thing happens, I prepare. I prepare for my longs. Okay, I prepare for my longs. This thing now it has to do with timing. How you time it, you hit the buy. Now timing, we're gonna go more into details, like I said, uh, in uh, in due time. But okay, so how many of you guys now understand the objective of the universe above and below? Right? Yeah. If you just look at candlesticks, most people, when they look at candlesticks, they're looking for something very clean and, and uh, easy to see. But what happens is if you just simply say, okay, if I tell you guys, look at this area and tell me what, what direction is the market, what is it trying to do? It's very confusing, right? It's like, what in the world are they doing? What do they want to do? But when you use this information and try to picture the universe above and below, it's like, oh, it's a clear uptrend. You know, there's no doubt about it. Okay, all these cells are very good because everyone's probably watching the UK news right now, I'm, I'm guessing. 
So they're all thinking about, oh my God, uh, something's going to happen to the pound. So everyone might start selling, looking at these big red candles. That's good for business for us because we're buyers. Okay, Carlos, could you please continue to where you bought long? I bought long here. At the In that area, uh, I can I can tell you the exact area if you guys take a look at this picture. That's where I bought long. This is before I got into the flight. I just entered long right there, put my stop loss below and that red bar, and I just left. I'm still in the trade. Still in the trade. This is the current status today. Uh, in fact, I have it open here. Current status as of right now. A couple times it's come back to graze my take profit, but nothing yet. No take profit yet. It's okay. It's a daily trade. I know it takes time. That's fine. And it's still in buyer's territory. If it's not in buyer's territory, I will close it out. It's okay. Stop losses are at zero anyway, so I have no risk on this trade anymore. Take profit, top of the green line, the, the highest green area. This, so this trade should pay out more or less around 3500 or $4,000 more or less. Yeah, this trade is a 2.7R, which is 270%, or 2.7 is to 1. Uh, would you use the July big guy to take profits? No, 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 no. That's too far out. That's too far out. Uh, Elena, would you say, is, is it a buy now? Uh, not at this moment, no. But I am really liking the red bars. Most people get scared when they see red bars. I like it. And I, I want you guys to learn to like it too. Okay. So this is basically the concept of anticipating, not participating. Now, what would happen, for example, let me ask you guys this question. I want you guys to all, all of you guys put yourself in my seat. Okay. Put yourself in my seat and think, not in terms of trading, think in terms of psychology, okay? What would have happened if I chased it and I bought here? What would have happened if I bought in that circle there? How many times do you think I might have dealt with a heart attack? It's a lot of times, right? Constantly, I'm going to be worrying about my trade. Constantly, I'm going to be freaking out. Constantly biting my nails. Constantly, you know having a bad attitude outside of trading life, you know, because I'm so upset or, or worried about my trade. You know, does this happen to you guys where, where your, your trading can even affect your real life outside? Yeah, and it's horrible. It's horrible. And it's not fair to the people around us. You know, they, they have no idea what we're doing. They're like, what's wrong with this guy? You know, he goes to his screen and he comes back angry. Well, I don't know what's wrong with him. <laughs> it's like, so, you know, don't let it don't let it happen to you. This only happens when you participate and you don't anticipate. If you anticipate, you get entries prior to the launch, then whatever happens afterwards doesn't bother you because you're in profit. Even if the profit gets declined by 50%, you're not freaked out because you're in profit. Right? How often do you get freaked out if you're in profit? Not much. All right, so uh, any questions from you guys? Any questions from you guys before we discuss uh, more details on this kind of And for those of you guys who have not mastering price action course, I'm putting it below the screen here in the offers area. Get it today. It's a $6,000 course that we've reduced it now for $197. We're gonna be raising prices, so get the, get the prices today if you can. Get the Mastering Price Action course. Everything you've seen here, we teach it more in detail. Much more powerful, much more examples, and we, we got a huge community. And people in the room right now are actually, a lot of them are students. They'll tell you how good it is. How many of you guys know, uh, how many of you guys have been to the course and can vote, vouch for it? Okay, there you go. There you got a lot of people. There you go. There's your live testimonials from real actual traders out there. Left a review this morning. Best I've seen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I look forward to seeing a lot of you guys in this thing. Um, I, I saw a couple questions in here saying, uh, is this webinar recorded? Yeah, this is recorded. 
Uh, Joe, yeah, we're talking about the Mastering Price Action course. Uh, Frank, what lot size you use? Uh, the sizes here, if you, you can see it right here. Where is my mouse? Ba, ba, ba. There we go. I'm gonna blow this up a little bit here. Here is a position here for 30K. Here is a position here for 35K and another position, oh, sorry, a 30K, a 35K, and one more 30K. Uh, I'm guessing I have three positions running on this. I have a total position on this of 83,000. So it's a small trade, very, very small trade. Uh, it's uh, 0 0.8 lots, if you wanna call it, or eight mini lots. Not bad, huh? When you're looking at a couple thousand dollars with eight mini lots, it's not even one standard lot. All right? If you're trading more actively, you can trade bigger. I don't trade so actively anymore because I'm always traveling or I got to do courses like this or webinars, so it's hard. it's hard. But I do trade. Every webinar you see, I have a, some trade I'm showing you guys. Every webinar. All right? All right, guys. So any questions on candlestick? Any questions? Uh, Luca, why not buy? Wait always a we V formation before enter long. Yes, I always wait for that because how do I know the sellers are gone? I, I really want them to be gone because uh, Luca, it, it's it's one thing to it's one thing to buy when they're sellers, and I know that's the best price, right? If I buy here, I know. Wouldn't you agree that's the best price if I buy it right there in that circle? Okay, that would be the best price if I buy it there, but I also have risk. And the risk, risk says, well, what if the sellers are not finished? What if that is a real support equals resistance and they're still selling? Then I'm screwed. I'm, I'm in trouble. Does that make sense? That's why, Luca, I need the sellers to die first. And once they die, I have a little bit more confidence. I, I still have risk, but I have a little bit more confidence that, okay, it's my, my turn. The sellers are finished. It's my turn. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, Mahesh, your new webinar software doesn't have a full screen option. Can you look into it? I will, I will, I will. Uh, it's also recorded. Maybe uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get this up and running on YouTube uh, if I can. Uh, I didn't record it on my end. Let me see if I can download it from the webinar company and I'll put it up on YouTube so you guys can maximize it and watch it. There's gonna be no chat though, I think, in the recording. So I apologize for that. Uh, can you point that? Area of the V formation, CMY. Yeah, here we go. This is that area right there. Okay. I mean, can you show us again how you entered this one, but with SNR? Adrian, sure, sure, sure. Uh, Joe, which account on YouTube do you use? Uh, Urban Forex. Urban Forex. Let me let me go into the other side. I don't want to draw too much here. I use this drawing for Forex watchers. I'll draw on this side. Okay. So uh, the question was, can you show us again? Uh, can, blah, blah, blah. can you show us again, short, how you entered the one but with SNR? Okay, you're talking about like this when we did SNR. You want me to do it that way to show you how I followed it? Okay, okay. So this was support equals resistance here. Support resistance can only be indicated if the support resistance breaks. Okay. All of you guys, remember this word, S and R. It's not S alone. It's S and R, right? Repeat after me, S and R, which means you need both pieces, support and resistance. It's not support or resistance, okay? Always remember that I have this, I have this issue with a lot of my students sometimes, S and R, yeah. So S and R means support and resistance. So here's support and resistance here. And we're looking at this as once the support is holding, then it breaks, it becomes resistance. It must break. And then we go up to the new halt area. What's a halt? When they hold for a certain period of time. Here's the hole here, that green candle is holding. And then it breaks again, makes a new low. Now, from this lowest point, I want to mark it. That's my lowest point. Here's my lowest point. Right there. Right? that little low spot. After that low spot, if I drag it across, I'm like, okay, he's coming down again here. Ah, oh, no lower low. He didn't break it. He's coming down again this next time. Ah, oh, he doesn't break it. 
He comes down again, turns into a green candle, doesn't break it again. Okay, he goes up, still in that same uh, support resistance, comes down again. Oh, great, he finally broke it. That's my new SNR, but then what happens? Whoa, he comes back up immediately. That means that low never happened. Okay, can we assume the red candles under the support are just excess? Well, okay, let me ask you a question this way. Up until this point, how do you know they are excess? You don't know, right? Because, because I don't want you to say, I, I don't want to say that's a V formation and you go home and you try it live and you're like, well, it looked like it was a real support resistance break, but then it became excess later. You can only know it's an excess once the green bar comes in. How, so how do we know an excess is due? Here's a tricky question. Okay, I, I'm, I'm talking money questions now. How do we know a V formation is due? You guys ask really direct questions. You know, you guys are some smart people. <laughs> how, do you know, how do you know a V formation is due? It's when you see how we read the seller. It's when the seller is slowing down. That's when we keep our eyes and ears open for a V formation is due. Once the seller slows down, for us, it's like, okay, somewhere around here, he's going to die. Make sense? And that's why we're looking at the concept of, okay, he made a lower low, but he was dying earlier. Is this even real? So then you can start judging and be like, I don't think that's a lower low. I don't think that's a new support resistance. I think that's a fake. And only time will tell you, oh, yeah, that is a fake. Because you're, you're not going to buy when the green candles up here. That's just to tell you, okay, the sellers are dead. Now give me a pullback and I'll buy it. It's only after that that you can buy, right? Because otherwise you're going to be buying up here and you know, heart attack mode, remember? Up here. <laughs> like if you buy up there, it's heart attack mode. Okay, Troy, Naveen, where do you enter your other position? Ah, now that's, that's something more advanced because I, I do something called scaling in. You know, so in this trade, you know how I showed you guys I'm making a 2.7 R trade? So to the naked eye, it looks like I'm making 2.7 R or 270%, but I can pull out over 1,000% from this trade. I do something called scaling in. These are some advanced techniques. So I'm, I'm not... So open to sharing that right now, but I will release that in one of my courses, uh, some advanced techniques. But to do those, you must master the price action course that I'm offering. That must be mastered. Otherwise, whatever I'm teaching you in the advanced stuff will not make sense at all. It'll just go over your head and be like, I don't know what he talked about. Maybe it's a different language. Okay. Um, I, how many courses do you have? Right now, we've released two. We have two more in production. Uh, we should have six by end of January. Uh, the reason why we're doing this is because we're trying to make Urban Forex the best education platform out there. How many of you guys are with me with that? You guys agree with my dream to make Urban Forex the best education company out there? Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad. Because I can't do this without you guys. There's no way I can do this without you guys. And I like that all of you guys support the idea and I, I can you know, reciprocate as well. I've lowered all the prices down quite a bit. It's no longer you know, 5,000 or $10,000 like it used to be. I've dropped down the prices to like 197, $200, like something everyone can afford and even I can still pay my staff with it, you know? So it's good, it's good. Uh, I said in my review, the markets are full of Scotland's. You are the river. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the review. Uh, a few simple video in Urban Forex website is not uh, a few sample video. In, yeah, the front page is not active on uh, Urban Forex. It's the course area is very active inside. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, the amount of emails we get, um, the amount of messages we get on a day-to-day -day basis, we've crossed over a thousand students. We have a lot, a lot of students now. Uh, and we've only started launching our courses a month and a half ago. So it's a very big success, very, very big success. Um, and I'm just waiting for you guys to graduate. 
for those of you who are already in the course as you graduate, I'm going to personally be reaching out to you guys because I want to know how we can work together. Because if you turn profitable, you can become an asset to me. Because I am looking to open a prop firm and I am looking to bring in more people. All the people who you see answering your questions are actually my ex-students who I've hired. Okay. All right. Uh, is it hard to figure out all this put simple in the end? I admire that you put the stuff and share it. Um, okay. There's two ways. Uh, it's a good uh, so the, Eric's question is, is it hard to figure out all this put simple in the end? I admire that you have cracked the stuff and share it. Okay. It is hard, but I walk you through a journey that it's actually easy. Okay. I had I to break it down because I always think of myself, what if I was you? You know, when I first started, I had, I had really, really smart mentors, really, really smart mentors. But when they spoke, I almost felt like hey, I'm, I'm here, I'm paying all this money, but I don't understand anything. You know, I really didn't understand anything. I was like, it almost sounded like they were speaking a foreign language to me. I didn't, I didn't want that to happen to you guys. So I broke it down. I re-recorded every video like 50 times to make sure, does the information get through better? Okay, again, re-record again. Does it get through better? Okay, keep this one. Oh, so much recordings I had to go through to make sure it's perfect, you know. So it's 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 taken a lot of my time and energy and effort to crunch down my you know 15 years of experience into seven weeks basically. Okay, we are in Kenya. How do we do the price action course? Um, well, it's in the offers below. You can use PayPal or I, I believe there's a credit card option too as 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 there. But I don't know if it works in Kenya or not. I don't know how the banking system there works, but uh, you'll have have to look into that app. Uh, Chris, yes, thank you. Yeah, it is very reasonably priced. Uh, but all right, guys. So um, let me let me turn this on here, and I am going to bid you all farewell. Thank you so much for attending. I'm reading the comments on a different screen here. So uh, yes, Mahesh will look into the full screen options. Uh, the course is seven weeks. Every week, new things release. So I want to thank you all for attending. It's always a pleasure to see you guys. Uh, and it's even more impressive that you guys log in like 30 minutes ahead of time. Like it's really impressive, the numbers of uh, sign-ins. So thanks a lot. You guys are the best. I'll see you guys next week uh, in two weeks, exactly two weeks, next webinar. Cheers.